Okay, we are going to do the problem, one that we've done in class, trying to find the angle of inclination, or the banking angle, um, between the ground and the road itself to prevent a car from sliding off, or sliding off of a track or the road when it's traveling at 60 kilometers per hour if there's no friction. So if the tires are bald, or in this case we're saying it's bleeding outside, um, and it's just causing very negligible friction, in that uh, horizontal, I suppose we call this horizontal direction of the road right here. And so we're missing that static friction that would normally keep the tires on the track. And so this is that angle theta right here that we're talking about between the road and, um, and, the, and the ground itself. Okay, so I have my, my triangle drawn a little bit differently. Um, we're going to say you're over here on this part of the road, which is how I like to draw my triangle. But it does give us that we're traveling around the road at a constant speed of 60 kilometers per hour. So that's our velocity, 60 kilometers per hour. And of course, we want to convert that. So that would be 60 times 10 cubed over 3,600 meters per second, and just to make this a little easier to plug in, um, that would be 30 over 3600. Um, the zeros cancel, and 6 goes into 36. 6 times, <laughs> so you'd have 100 over 6 meters per second, so that's going to make it much easier to work with. However, it does tell us that the radius of this circle is 200 meters, and we'll need the attribute of the centripetal force. Now, notice we are not given the mass of the car, and maybe that's because since for this particular situation, the mass of the car doesn't matter. Um, of course, the mass of the car is going to play a difference with kinetic friction, but for this case, it's just not going to matter. So let's start by drawing a force diagram. So this is the car. Um, or that we need the angle of inclination here for when the car is traveling at 60 miles per hour. Okay, maybe that's because they've determined is the, the max speed that they want on the road for this. Okay, so the force I just drew here was the force of gravity, of course. And then this force should be normal force, normal force to the road. Now, if there were static friction to prevent the car from sliding, in either direction. It would be uh, down here towards the embankment below or towards the embankment above. It just depends on how fast or how slow you're going and which way static friction is. Now, let's also identify where which direction centripetal force is in. And it should definitely be towards the center of the circle, which is right here. The centripetal force is going to be towards this direction. Our direction pointing to the centripetal um, direction. Okay, and so that means that's where we're going to make our axes. Um, so an axis should always be, and uh, our first axis should always be the centripetal axis. That's what I call it. I call that x of c. And then our y axis. Um, will just be with perpendicular to that, like we have always done. Um, so I guess I'll just do the same, but maybe in a, a lighter color. Just right over the top of that. And that'll be our y axis. And notice my gravitational axis, just the gra force of gravity just is right over the top of that. It's still there, it's just right over the top. Okay, so there's our gravity. And so when we sum up our forces, we're going to sum up the forces in the centripetal direction. And we're going to sum up, I don't have a gray, I guess I can use this. We can sum up the forces in the y direction. This is our centripetal direction, and this is our y direction here. Okay? And remember, when we sum up the forces in our centripetal direction, it's going to equal mass times the centripetal acceleration. We sum up the forces in our y. Let's think about this. Do you really want to be going so fast that you lose contact uh, with the ground? We definitely don't want that. So that should be equal to 
zero, it should not be accelerating at all. Um, all of our forces should balance out in that direction. At least one would hope. Okay. Um, so let's figure out how we can find what, uh, what this is, what theta is. That's our overall goal. Let's find theta. So let's start by finding the sum of our forces in the centripetal direction. So this is theta. This one would not be theta. Theta. Not theta. So this tells us this angle here is theta. Okay. So what that means is um, our centripetal force here, I'm trying to find the calculus, um, is provided by the normal force, actually. That should be the only force that's pointing in the centripetal direction. So I'm going to highlight these, like I suggest you always do. Always highlight which forces are the centripetal forces. And in this case, it's only the, um, this component of the normal force. So if we actually label these, this normal force is right here, so this would be the normal force times cosine of theta. And this component right here is the normal force times sine of theta. So our only uh, force acting in the centripetal direction, center seeking direction, would be the normal force times sine of theta. And that should be equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, or centripetal acceleration. Keep that in mind. You have to use centripetal acceleration in that direction. It's always pulling you towards the center, and that's it's just the way that it changes. It's very strange, and so you just have to use this formula. Okay. Now we know that this is equal to v squared over r, but I'm going to plug that in in just a minute. And my goal is to find theta here. So um, let me actually sum up the forces uh, in the y direction. And that should be Fn cosine theta. And then in the opposite direction, the force of gravity. Which in this case, remember we said, was just going to be zero. So if I can simplify this a little bit, remember my main goal is to find theta. So I can say Fn cosine theta is equal to, I'm going to bring this over to the other side, and I know that that is mass times gravity. Now, before I keep going, I don't know what the normal force is. I don't know what theta is, um, and I don't know what the mass is, but I can see, I see that these two equations are in a very similar form. So I'm actually going to bring this equation down and write it right below it, because I love this trick. It's quite helpful when you have many unknowns and everything to multiply. It's just going to make your life a little easier, unless you hate the trick, and then I guess it doesn't um, so what I'm going to now do is divide, divide the two equations. And, and I can do that because I know both cosine and sine cannot be zero. I know that this is a positive quantity. I know acceleration here is not zero. That would be silly. Um, it would not be moving in a circle. Um, so I can divide these. And what I notice is going to cancel when I divide is the normal force cancels, which is great because I don't know that right now. The mass cancels super great because I really don't know that. And what I'm left with is cosine of theta over sine theta is equal to gravity over centripetal acceleration, which I'm going to write v squared over r. And then I know I have, I know what uh, the radius is, I know what the speed of uh, car is 60 kilometers per hour. I know what gravity is, and the only thing I don't know is theta. So this is cotangent, but I'm going to flip everything around to make it tangent. That's just much easier to work with tangent. So tangent theta, um, if you were to write this, this would be g times r over v squared, just because I'm dividing by r, so it moves up. So if I flip that, that would be v squared over g r. And so to solve for theta, is the tangent inverse of v squared over gr is equal to theta. How nice. And by plugging in these values here, um, this was like 100 divided by 6. Also.
squared divided by g, you know, 9.801 times the radius, I think, was 200. One, I think so, yeah, 200. And we get theta is about 8.0596. You are also welcome to give this in radians. You just have to make sure I label that in radians. So that is our value. So that means that this, this embankment must have an angle of at least 8.0596 degrees, uh, for, or exactly that, for a car going exactly 60 kilometers per hour to need no friction at all, no static friction. Um, parallel to the plane uh, to keep this car uh, from sliding up off the track due to the centripetal force pulling on it, which is neat. Okay. Um, very, very neat.